All right, everyone. This is this is an Officer Academy sponsored training. Uh, we the Officer Academy is just a organization within the SKL wider community that just helps train new squad and platoon leaders. Generally speaking, SKL does not really have a strategic doctrine. What when you all are leading a squad or leading a platoon, you can lead it however you want in in and as far as what you are doing. You can run flash races, harasser races. You can run a sweaty platoon. You can do galaxy op ops. I don't really care what you do. Uh, what we care about is how you administer all you are in the SK. Start to connect again. What we care about is how you administer the platoon while wearing the SKL tag. So, with that in mind, I'm going to go over just a couple of very basic things, and I'm just going to try to boil it down to simple. With an SKL platoon, we expect everyone to be pleasant and to be concise with their orders. Do not use a bunch of slang that people that new players would not understand without explaining the slang. So, for instance, baby gates. We all know what baby gates are, but um, it, it's handy to occasionally say, we when we say baby gates, we mean hard light barriers in the tactical slot. We usually like our SKL platoons to be public so that new players in, in other outfits can join us and have fun and fill out our numbers. And for the most part, we like to play for the alert. Um, it's not a hard rule. But if you ever run like a flash race or harasser race or some other kind of like meme op, like Orby likes to do saving private Orby and stuff like that, we usually prefer you do it on the off continent, kind of like what we're doing now. Uh, like the reason that I ran this training on the off continent is because we are not taking the population away from the population balance queue on the main continent. So we're not just sitting at the warp gate on the on Indar taking, you know, what how many people we have in here, 24 people away from the alert. We're just over here and we're not we're not really contributing, but it doesn't matter on this continent. So just bear in mind when you lead squads and platoons in the future, like we do kind of want you all to contribute and if you're not contributing to the alert, perhaps get on the off. Sorry, again. If you are not contributing to the alert, perhaps do it on the off continent. So this is a good time for me to, to talk. If everyone hits the P screen and looks at the, the platoon, a good practice for more ad, uh, advanced platoons uh, to make sure that people join your platoons is to balance out the squads. So we just got a Charlie squad set up, but there's only two people in it. So in the squad finder, people are not, are not likely to join a two-person squad. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to skim some people from Bravo and Alpha to balance the three squads to look more even. Yeah, so now all the squads are about half strength, so they'll all be showing a healthy number in the squad finder. And as long as you put in whatever the, the platoon lead wants you to put in as your squad description, it will show on the squad finder. You have to have at least two people in the squad, and you have to, you have, to have a description set and enable. Can you use it? I put it to SKL leadership training so I can enable recruitment. Yep, yep, sounds perfect. What were you saying, Black Dragon? I was saying Charlie's open. He did it. Good job. Yeah. All right. So now we now we have three squads open. All right. So again, I'm going over a lot of simple stuff because, like, when it comes down to the end of the day, you guys can run platoons however you want to run a platoon. I personally, and you, many of you all, have been in my platoons, run my platoons very sweaty. Uh, I go hard for the alert. I usually take my platoons to the hard fights. Uh, if there's a 96 plus somewhere, I go to it and try to end it. That is to say, you all don't have to do that yourselves. You can run casual, you can run air, you can run armor. As long as you are being pleasant, as long as you are administering your platoons well and making sure that everyone is having a good time, we don't really care what you do. It's a different thing for squads. Uh... A lot of platoon leaders will have different expectations of their squad leaders. If you are squad leading for a platoon lead, the chain of command is platoon lead first, squad lead second. So if you have 
a, a chart like in this in this example, I made Sly Hunter Charlie Squad lead. He cannot just take his Charlie Squad and go off and pull armor somewhere without the platoon lead's permission. That's kind of like a breakdown. There's kind of an expectation that the platoon lead respects the opinions of the squad leads, but at the end of the day, the squad leads exist to enforce the platoon lead's order. Is, Hi, is everyone... Uh, We're heading to Eli Tower. <laughs> is everyone understanding me there? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And like I'm saying... Like yeah, like, yeah. yeah, the the platoon lead is not like a dictator or whatever uh, the platoon lead shouldn't be just kind of throwing his weight around but there there is uh, some expectation of respect both for and uh, for the platoon lead and for the squad lead you all just need to be a part of a team the platoon lead needs to respect the squad leads the squad leads can organize their 12 people a lot, whole lot easier than the platoon lead as their 48 people uh the, it, it can be beneficial for for some of you who are new. So any of you who are new, it's perfectly fine to run your platoon together with, with just the full platoon at the same base each time. But if you ever need to split off your squads to do like, you know, send like Charlie squad to, to deal with a back cap, you don't need to send 48 people to deal with it. it. It's good to be able to rely on your squad leads to do. Know that if you tell Charlie squad to do something, that there is a reasonable expectation that a lot of Charlie's squad will do it. That being said, uh, I usually run off of a 50% rule as far as what I expect the squads in the platoon to be able to do. Uh, when you first inherit the platoon, do not get angry when you don't see a ton of the platoon quickly doing what you say. I only expect like 50% of the entire platoon to quickly respond. Um, that is what momentum is for. If you say, tell the whole platoon, hit the U-key, please, we're going to Ice Attack to take it, take Ice Attack, everyone you know, who did participate, participated well and was super vocal in their squads, then the next objective, more people will join. Uh, if, if the Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta squad leaders are doing their job, they're, they're, they will be talking to their squads and making sure they are supposed to be. And just over the course of time, as you get victories, as you start winning, as you start communicating with your platoon, that 50% will go up to 70%, to 80%, to 90%. I would never expect 100% of the whole platoon to be everywhere you want them to be. But over time, with momentum, you can get the platoon to listen to you. Oh, man, I missed a whole bunch of platoon chat. So is that the Medikill question? All right, so Medikill asks, was redeploying too frequently when either not ahead in the alert or when, or when in, not in an alert brought up? No, it's not been brought up. Again, that's called redeploy side by many people. It's, it's you, take, you, take, you, you tell your platoon to hit the U-key, you go to a problem, you take, you take your platoon to another problem, U-key, U-key, U-key. That is not really something that we frown or incurred. It really, it's just another one of those things that's up to the platoon lead, uh, especially... In the late alert, a lot of platoons will do it, but sometimes platoons just do it normally. Like, if there's a problem and you feel like your platoon is the only person that can solve said problem, then you can't be blamed for hitting. So let's see. I think that's all the questions in chat. Now, unless anyone has any other voice questions, we're going to go into some practical stuff. I don't, I don't plan to make this part very long, so expect just like another 10-ish minutes of doing some practical stuff, and then we... Uh, question can platoon so i assume the platoon leader can hear his uh squad leaders talk but not the squad chats of everyone the platoon lead can only hear platoon chat and whatever uh squad they are in so i cannot okay. hear you talking in charlie's squad and oh and we can all and we can all hear command i guess command's a good thing to go over very briefly be respectful in commands anyone who is a squad or platoon leader can be in command chat so don't clog it up with conversation, clog it up with pertinent information, coordinate with other SKL platoons or VKTZ platoons or whatever in there. Uh, keep it brief in command because there's a lot of people that can hear you. Remember, especially in command, you are representing SKL to hundreds of other people if you were talking in command. So please practice calm discipline. And... Yeah, frame everything as, as a suggestion. 
tell them where your platoon is going. Tell them where you are sending squads if it's if it's relevant. But just don't clog it up too much. Uh, MMI rates asks should squad leads ever use command? Um, yeah, it's kind of like over what over nine said. Discuss it with the PL. Uh, a lot of the times when I when I lead platoons, I'm like so busy like looking at the map and thinking about where we should go that I will just say, you know, over nine, you you talk in command for a minute or tell them what we're doing or you know some Bravo lead can do. So just play it fast and loose. That that kind of goes into the whole you know mutual trust between the platoon lead and the squad leads. Uh, you should be able to trust your squad leads to disseminate information for you if you're busy doing something. Yeah, like what Gade said in platoon chat, avoid giving hard orders to other platoons. Uh, just be diplomatic, like like Black Dragon said. All right, we're going to go do some practical stuff. I'm going to clear the waypoints. Everyone, let's just get a galaxy up for each squad, and we're going to go to Pale Canyon, because I just want to go over a couple maneuvers and explain a couple things. Looks like there's a Charlie Galaxy up. Let's just get in this Alpha Galaxy. Let's get a Bravo Gallop. So everyone come to me. I just want to show you something. We're going to do this briefly. I've shown this to several of you before, but we're just gonna, I just want to show you all this. We'll wait for people to catch up. I'll get you fixed up. Okay, so just very briefly, one of the reasons that we want to be very new player friendly is because pe like people, this game is free. Right, So a lot of people, and I'm sure many of you have had this story, a lot of people will download the game just because, hey, it's free and it's on Steam, and they'll check it out, and they will go through the tutorial, which is better but still not as good as it should be, and then they will just be freaking confused by a lot of things. And one of the reasons that I encourage all of you to help new players is because there's a lot of things that they find weird. For instance, anyone who does not play Planet Side would find what I'm about to do strange as hell. It's magic. Because the idea of killing yourself to go somewhere else is not in a ton of games. Like, other games have spawn uh, options. Other games have spawn, you know, like, if you die, you respawn. But not very many games have it just where you, you know what? This life's not really doing it for me. I'm just going to, you know, slip my own throat and go somewhere else. <laughs> uh, so, like, you just need to remind new players, hit the U key. It doesn't affect your KD if you care about KD. It, it's it's literally just you're just you're teleporting from one place to another place. And a lot of us take, and this is just the, the tip of the iceberg. Like, we take a lot of things for granted as more veteran uh, plant side players, but... Just think about things from a BR1 perspective. We get a lot of new players in all the time. It's easy for us to say or to fall into bad habits. For instance, uh, a bad habit I hear from some platoon and squad leaders is, all right, everyone, let's go here. And if I say, all right, everyone, let's go here to Balder Amp, a new player might say, Oh, hey, there's the platoon waypoint, and then start doing this. Running for taking. Oh, wait, wait, how do I get there? So, like, you need to say, it's it's helpful to say, redeploy, please. Hit the U key if you don't know what the, how to redeploy. Uh, if someone says, join combat, will take you there, tell the tell the platoon, hit the J key, please. The J key will, t will drop you in where we are going. Uh, it's it's little it. things like that. Slap that, slap that U button. Yeah. All right. Now I want to go over a couple other things. Uh, I, I would prefer people not shoot here because we're just. I'm just going to explain some stuff. So everyone, take out your knives, please. Just hold the melee button. I, I know there's going to be enemies here, and if we run into any of them, we'll just knife them to death or something. But I kind of want to go over how base attacks and defenses can can both help and harm your platoon. And you guys will see this uh but it, it's basically something that i'm calling locking uh to where a lot of the times a platoon will either attack a base or defend a base and they will lock onto a terrain feature or they will lock onto a door so just come with me we're just going to run and we're going to pretend like we're coming to defend this base we're building up for a crash or we're just spawning in the normal way and you guys have seen this like probably a hundred times in the past 
A platoon will get here, and then they will stop at these doors. So the first couple of people will pull out their guns. They'll start peeking. They don't want to die. I disabuse them of this notion. When we are defending bases, we go through doors. Doors are for walking. We don't we don't lock at this door. We go through it, and there's some people in here. Go ahead and knife them. Turn the door up here in the, in, the, in the triple stack. Yeah, medics, get some reses up, please. Let's get into the next triple stack. But... I hope you all are kind of understanding what I'm saying. A lot of these terrain features or these building features that we're running into, people will lock onto. They'll stop at these at these stairs and they'll go. They'll peek up them. Oh, are there enemies up there? Don't like if you're running a platoon with 12 to 48 people, use your numbers to your advantage. Keep them moving, especially with a max crash, because if you lock on any individual feature, they have time to prepare C4. They have time to prepare a mana turret. They have time to get grenades through the door, and then you will actually be locked into play. I can't tell you how many times I get annoyed by seeing 100 people at a doorway, and I'm like, I'm just going in, and then they follow, and it actually works. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, you need to, or you have to tell them. You just have to especially tell them. Especially yeah, if, if you're a platoon or a squad lead, just tell them through the door. And most importantly, and listen to me here, most importantly, if you're a platoon lead, get through the damn door yourself. Be the first through the door I can't tell you how many times I've died in this game being the first through a door or the first up some stairs. I've spent more crashes than I have led dead than I have alive. And that's a good thing. Like, be an example to the 48, 7 other people in your command, and they will listen to you from then on and forever. Another thing is uh, is something that... that like military terms they would call like addressing the ranks but like after a crash has happened like, let's take this situation everyone find gold star and come to me you're not going to get everyone to find gold star but some people will find you like they're doing now and we we're redressing the ranks we're getting the crash reformed because now we have a new objective which is this garage and i would say come to gold star come to gold star we're hitting this garage and you might not have the same amount of people that you had for the initial crash but you'll usually have enough Kill the Sunday, <laughs> or the or the to take the position that you want to take next. So just bear that stuff in mind. Like be be a leader. Tell people find gold star. One crash might not be enough. Don't ex don't wait around for everyone to find you. Just say find gold star. Start running. Like if you all were watching the mini map just a second ago, like literally seventy percent of you immediately started corkscrewing back to me. And then we just, we balled back up and we hit the Sunder Garage and we took that Sunday. And these are, I know these these sound simple, but you all see these situations happen. Uh, like blueberries or, or, or a casual platoon or a regular platoon or whatever, they will run up against a terrain feature, be it a hill, be it some stairs, be it a door, and they will hesitate because they don't want to die. And that hesitation gives the enemy a chance to see for your maxes. Uh, gives the enemy a chance to plant a mana turret down to cover that door. Gives them a chance to collapse on that door and make it harder to go through. But the best thing you can do is to keep your platoon moving. Movement means victory. And if you keep them moving, they just the enemy just won't know what the hell they're to do because they're used to people walking to a terrain feature. Uh, I don't know how many times... I've crashed a door, and, that, and crashing that through that door basically ended the, the battle because we just kept moving. We killed them as they were spawning. We got to their spawn just like we did here, and we blew it up without really even slowing down. And, and stuff like that, that kind of consistency of play will help you more than, like, knowing what a base is like. Roseanne Tree had a question. Close your chat. Right. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get inside. Also, uh, present earlier on, I was leading as Galaxy Squad, and there was this instance where there was maybe three squads of NC uh, infantry on Chimney Rock on Amarish, and we were just one part of Battle Gals. And we essentially dropped on point, we took it, and defended for a while until we were wiped out. I, I think yeah. the question, like, as you said, like, cohesion and, like, surprise is the element. 
both of uh, one mass of people surprising even a greater mass is also helpful, also works out. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing, like, I, a lot of the stuff that I talk about is, it comes from my own preferences. Like, I'm an infantry lead. Like, I, I would, I usually spawn in on the base, I get all of you all together, and we run screaming at the point at a very, at a, at a pre-selected period or a spot. You, valve drops, perfectly acceptable. Like, you figure out your own style. Uh, a lot of platoon leads like to do valve drops and gal drops. I do valve drops and gal drops as well. Those are a good way to bisect uh, enemy or camping or spawn. It's just it's just for you to determine, do I have time to just do a max crash, or do do I have time to get a bunch of Valks together and people in the Valks and then drop roughly together? You just have to decide when you have time, what you have time for, where your preferences lie. Um, if anyone would do, would you all like to do a Valk drop, or, or do you all know it well enough to to understand the concept? Let's go ahead and uh, redeploy. We're just going to redeploy back to the warp gate, and we're going to go into the Q and A. That uh, I could probably talk for three hours. I'd like a three-hour pros in podcast. <laughs> I think I think yeah. you guys under I think you guys understand what I'm what I'm trying to to convey. But everyone just hit the U key. Go back to the warp gate. Um, it's like a, it's like I was saying. Tree is right. Valks Valks. Gals, perfectly fine. I'm going a lot for my own preferences here. Whatever you all would prefer to do, whatever would make you comfortable, whatever you enjoy doing, do it. Uh, the only thing that I'm here to do is to try to just help you do it as best as you can. Uh, a lot of the things that I teach are applicable to any type of play because I am just trying to get you comfortable with speaking to your platoon. I'm trying to get you comfortable with trusting your squad leads, I'm trying to get the squad leads comfortable with rank squad. All of that is pretty applicable. Um, if you're running a battle gals uh, platoon, you're going to want to give them constant information. You're going to want to tell them where to go. You're going to want to guide them. So, like, all of this is applicable. That being said, we're going to go into the Q&A, so does anyone have any questions at all? It doesn't have to be about what we're talking about. You can ask me about specific continents, specific bases, anything as long as it's leadership related, and I will be looking at the platoon chat.